Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. Good morning, good morning. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. An honor and a privilege to have you listen in with us. This morning, I have Carolyn with me. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. And if you want to protect what you love to Max, you got to talk to Carolyn over there at Atlas Tracks. Good morning, Miss Carolyn. Good morning, Rascala. Happy Sunday to everyone out there listening. It's uh, kind of a gloomy day over here. Where, what does it look like where you're at? Well, you know, we got a little hazy cloud cover over here by the coast. I see a lot of wind blowing, and you know me, I like jumping on my uh, beach cam. So uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of rollers coming out on the beach, but nothing too crazy right now. Well, we've got uh, everywhere I look here, it's overcast. And as I look in the uh, the uh, the radar for Florida look it appears to be a very clear uh, evidence of a front coming through, and um, the front on on the west side, the front is just south of um, Tampa, and on the north on the uh, east side is just north of Palm Bay, so it's coming in at an angle. A lot of um, looks like disturbed weather coming in with it. A lot of serious thunderstorms. We got orange. We got red. Ooh. That's the heavy-duty stuff. So for right now in our area, it's it probably going to be several hours before it gets here. But it is headed our way. It's headed kind of north-northeast. And, uh, my gosh, it completely covers uh, probably, uh, oh, I'd say at least uh, 70, 80 miles on the west side extended out over the state. And on the east side, probably 100 miles. It's a huge line that you can see coming down the state. So uh, as the day goes on, I think the uh, weather's going to get a little... Uh, a little messier. Where I'm at right now, I mean, it's just completely overcast. There's not, uh, there's not a, a, a drop of sunlight coming through at this point. Um, let's see, tides for the day. We're looking at, um, well, if I can get it to work here. There we go. The high tide was uh, 425 this morning. The next low tide will be right after the show, 1034. Excuse me, that's the low tide. Yes, low tide, 1034. Next high tide will be 432 this afternoon, and the final low tide for the day will be 1043 tonight. So right after the show, we're going to have a low tide. Uh, the water, there is a small craft warnings out for you guys at the smaller crafts. Be careful out there. There's the uh, NOAA has issued a small craft warning. Um, it doesn't look good for the little guys. That, uh, as this front comes through, I'm sure it's not going to look <laughs> much better. <laughs> Uh, it is, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing to see this thing on, on radar. It's just a, str- a line that's just very vivid right through the, right through the state. So today will be a maintenance day, right? Today, one of those days where you pull out the fishing rod and you make sure it's oiled up and clean your line. And if your line is ragged, it's time to replace the line, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there was a little tournament yesterday, uh, out of here for the Cove restaurant, uh, selfish tournament. And I'm not sure, uh, how things went i know a lot of people got zero for one you know some hookups I'm not, i didn't hear anybody had really great catches yesterday but it was rough yesterday yeah well it looks like it's i mean i it, i'm off i'm probably 20 some odd miles from the ocean and it's blowing out here so you don't see it blowing right maybe because of the the overcast because we are just it looks like uh where i'm at it just looks like it's going to rain all day i know it's just temporary temp for right now but uh it's everywhere I look. It's overcast. It's not coming up on the map, though. But it is. It's coming up in the sky outside. <laughs> I took the dog out this morning for a walk, as I normally do every morning, and it was the the temperature was really nice. Uh, it wasn't cold. It wasn't hot. It was just right. Of course, a little humid because of the overcast, but uh, it was just right. And the wind was blowing. You know, I mentioned earlier we got the wind blowing, but because the temperature was uh, probably about 72, 73 degrees already in the morning, it almost felt like air conditioning. It was really very, very, very nice. As long as it doesn't, uh, you know, pour down rain while we're walking, I have no problem with that. As long as it's kind enough to wait till we get back in the house, thank you, God. Appreciate it. <laughs> I don't want to get soaked yeah, no, first yeah. thing in the morning. 
Absolutely. And you know what? It's, it's going to rain and thunder later. It's perfect for, I think, today's the Super Bowl. Oh, that's right. Today is the Super So what are you going to do today? Are you going to watch the Super Bowl? You know, I don't think so. Um, you know, maybe catch a couple commercials here. By the time that starts, I think it's not till you know, 6, 7 o'clock at night. It's, it ends up being a long, a long day. How about yeah. you? Yeah, I, I don't don't have much interest in it anymore. I've lost... Uh, I've lost respect for a lot of those people. Um, they don't honor our country in uh, the way that I that I have been brought up to honor the country. I guess is the best way to put it. So I've lost. Uh, I just lost interest. I don't don't care for it anymore. There's still a lot of people very interested in. God bless you. Knock yourselves out. <laughs> it's a reason to party for some people. You know, they just need a reason to party. So uh, a lot of food is sold today. I'm sure. You know, there's a lot of parties that go on. Uh, we're going to have one now that you mentioned the Super Bowl. Uh, one of the neighbors down the street here, about uh, 10 houses from me, uh, typically on Super Bowl uh, day, he has a line of cars out front. So I'm sure that he's going to be going through some food and some drinks. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I really do miss the uh, Budweiser commercials. They took those off a few, a few years ago because they weren't selling enough beer and millennials were all coming up. But boy, I miss those happy, go lucky commercials. And I'll sit by a computer and watch them probably later on today just to, you know, get a feel for them. But, um, you know, I don't think there's, uh, there's just not much fishing going on today as far as uh, tournaments. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I can see that wind up at the top of these palm trees. It's going to pick up later on in uh yeah, as the front, this week. yeah, as the front comes through, it's going to get. Uh, we're going to be picking up. But if you could see this on the map, it is absolutely amazing to see this thing coming through. There's a line just coming through Florida, and you can see it's moving north northeast. But the line is so long that uh, even though it's moving north northeast, it's going to affect us before the end of it uh, moves out of the way. So, as the day goes on, I'm sure the weather is going to continue to. Um, not be so pleasant. <laughs> you got sunshine where you're at? I want to make sure you, I understand you. It's clear where you're at? You know, it's got a hazy kind of cloud. I can see a little bit of shadows outside, but it's one of those kind of, uh, those clouds. Almost like, a in, win, almost like a winter day up north. That exactly what I was going to say. Like yeah. a winter day up north, a little bit gray, a little yeah. bit of shadow, but uh, I can tell as we're even just talking now, it's getting grayer out. So, uh, yeah. you know, expect to do inside inside chores and maintenance, uh, fishing equipment, yep. maintenance, and maintenance day. The family. That's right. Maintenance day and uh, maybe a little reading up on what may be coming up, you know, some of the different stuff. There's always something happening in the fishing community. And uh, so maybe one of those days where you do a little maintenance, do a little reading up on what's what's going to happen, what's coming up here. Um, as I understand it, this is the season for the sailfish, and because of that, there are numerous uh, tournaments coming up here. When we get Robert on, I'm sure he can tell me about the latest and greatest. Um, so uh, as that as we continue with the tournaments, you know, there'll be plenty of time to to do fishing. So it'll be one of those days yeah, where. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to tell you, I totally forgot. It was such a last-minute trip. Um, the girls were invited down to Elam at Harris to fish, which is a normal boat we fish out of Palm Beach. And uh, we are leaving tomorrow, last minute. Okay, wait a minute, and, uh, Carolyn. Say it again because you broke up a little bit. Sure. So um, the boat, Real Captivating, that you're familiar with, moved their mm -hmm. boat from Palm Beach to Elam at Harris, Mexico, last week. Uh, and they invited the girls, the girls' fishing team, down this week to do a little sail fishing Hot dog. and um, take little photos. And I believe they got 50 sailfish yesterday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Right. And and I know we have Carol Strickland on, and, boy, it's killing her because she can't make it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, so we've got a couple of the other girls going down. Just, just for a quick, you know, two-day trip. We'll leave Monday, come back Wednesday. Wow. Well, I think we have Robert on. Good, uh, yeah, I think that's Robert. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. How is everybody? Good morning, Robert. How are you doing? Excellent. Looking at the uh, cloudy sky, and uh, looks like it's about to pour here. But yeah, that's what it looks like here where I'm at. So I guess it's not quite so bad where she's at. Looking at the map, there's an amazing uh, front coming through, and you, you, it's so clear and distinct on the map. It's just there's no way you can miss it. Like a solid line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like a, literally a solid line. And it's it's got red and yellow. You know, when they have the serious weather come through, it comes out in different colors. And 
the, the more serious stuff is the red stuff, and there's, there's red in this line. <laughs> so we got some, right now there's some nasty weather coming through Florida. Not in our area yet, but uh, hopefully by the time it gets here, it breaks down. Not quite so bad. Did you get to do any fishing this last week, my friend? I did not. Uh started working on the next issue of the magazine, so that'll keep me busy for a few days. So. And that is the Florida Fisherman Magazine, which you can find at, at www.f. Uh, flfishmag.com. Yeah. flfishmag.com. Good Lord, yeah. my mind. Uh, and so, h- how big is this one? Uh, it looks like Average? it'll be close to 100 pages again. Oh, my goodness. Now, the thing about having a uh, a magazine online like this is that it's almost unlimited to what you can provide to people with regard to... Um, entertainment you can have videos you can have pictures of course you're going to have stories but the difference between it and a printed magazine is that the advantage you can have music you can have you know like us videos uh you can't do that so well, much yeah, and it's it, nice to be able to put people's website links right to their their logos and you so know, it's a vast amount of information on um, uh, uh, lots of fishing it's a stories. Whole different format, that's for sure. So. Yeah, lots of fishing stories, which I which I really like. I enjoy that part. A lot of different. It just shows you how many different people enjoy this sport, if you will. The the uh, ability to go out there and, and it's kind of sort of like the lotto, if you will. You don't know if you're going to catch anything, and you and you may just catch <laughs> the one of your life. You don't know, uh, so it's a little like the lotto. You never mm-hmm. know. Yeah. That's the one thing we all love about fishing. You just yeah. never know. Yeah, yeah. So your favorite little snook spot you, you you've kind of had to avoid that because of uh, putting the the uh, magazine together. I take it. Yeah, I haven't been over there. It's it's normally a late night thing that we do. So. Mm-hmm. I've not you know, been doing that one. I think but, uh, we'll get back to that next week. So I think I shared with you a while back uh, for Father's Day. My son took me fishing, and we caught snook, and we caught s- some of the biggest snook I've ever seen, and we caught them out in the ocean. That was the last place in the world I ever expected. I don't know why. Maybe it's just ignorance on my part, but we caught them right off of the uh, Palm Beach Inlet. I mean, literally, you could have swam yeah. out to where these snook were. Literally, that was the last place in the well, world yeah, I would have ever. Surf fishing, you can catch them surf fishing too. So. I would have never thought there would be. I've always thought of like where you go, you know, somewhere like a canal under a. They're they're resting up under the tree or something, you know, something like that, or in mangroves. Um, when the only other time I've seen them out in the ocean was uh, when we went to go to Naples, they would sit out under the uh, the pier at night. They would only show up at night, and they would sit in the shadows. The pier would be lit up, and of course there would be light hitting the water, but then they, there's an area of shadow. They would be right at that point where between shadow and light, they would be roaming around. You could see them. You couldn't see them clearly, but you could see they were definitely there. That's the only other place I've ever seen them. And so I was shocked to see these things. Out in, I don't know. Maybe ignorance on my part. I guess. It, so I guess that's common, right? Or is it only when they're spawning? No, they're, they're, they travel. There's no question about that. As, Surf fishing for snook has been something I've done since I was a kid. So wow, I see that surprises me that you would catch them like at a beach, right? You're talking about going like to a beach and go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just right along the beach. Huh. If you get near an inlet and right along a the beach, there there's going to be lots of them. So. Well, that's where I, where my uh, this this captain took us when I had my son with us. He took us literally just. Uh, like I'm saying, we could have swam out to this area where it was. It was unbelievable. And it was probably uh, oh, 25, 30 feet deep. You could look down. You could see schools of them. It was just amazing. I've never seen anything like that. Never seen anything like that at all. That that just blew my mind totally. I'd love to be able to repeat that. I bet it's not a repeatable thing. Well, of course, because it's now snook season, right? Because back then it wasn't snook season. This is why they travel in schools. They get educated, right? All right, it's snook season. You That's guys right. can you, you guys can bite whatever you want. Doesn't matter. We're coming back. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, looking yeah, yesterday. There was an article about they're trying to uh, on the west coast trying to get it to where you can keep some redfish and snook. So they've been they've had a moratorium there for over quite a, a while. Year, I think. Yeah, it's been going on for a while. Yeah. What were you going to say, Carolyn? I was going to say, I've never had the, um, the luck of actually catching snook, um, believe it or not, even though they run through my canal. And uh, 
And it's definitely something I gotta I gotta try and get on board and do because people say it's a fun fight on light tackle. Yeah, it is. Oh, they're great on light tackle. You can't beat them. They're like giant bass. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's a good good way to describe them. They got that kind of mouth that just it just really expands. Yeah, same sort of eating habits too. It's moving and it's near me. I'm gonna eat it. So. You know. <laughs> So t- give us a little uh, incentive, uh, not incentive, a little, uh, I can't think of the right word, a little uh, peek into what's coming up on the uh, on the magazine. Well, uh, got some, uh, there's a great freshwater fishing report uh, coming from the guys from Southern and Outdoors. Is he coming on the radio today or? I don't think so. No, I think he's doing his own show now. Rick Sutherland? Yeah, he does. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think there was a conflict of interest early in the morning. He was doing something, either shooting video or something, and uh, and he couldn't he couldn't make it. Even though we've had him on many times in the past, I think because of his show now that uh, during the morning on Sundays he's he's uh, conflict of time interest only. Uh, so he's giving you that a good. And I spent a day with uh, Patrick Price from Daymaker Charters. Oh wow, that'll be in there. Excellent. And. Uh... Some articles I haven't even had a chance to look at yet came in last night, so I don't know what those are yet. Where do you? But, th- uh, there's always good stuff in there. People send great stuff. It is. Uh, it's an enjoyable thing to do. To, if when you have a few minutes to spend, this is a, a great place to go. It's all kinds of information. A lot of just regular everyday people sharing their fishing stories. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice break from all the insanity that's going on around us. It's a kind of almost, almost, I want to say almost n- normal. <laughs> yeah. It's and almost, there's a new captain, Katie uh, Joe Davis oh, from wow. uh, the West coast. Yeah. Katie Joe has been uh, someone we've followed for years, just fishing, but, uh, she also used to work for ganglers up in uh, Manitoba during the winters and the summers with their fishing stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, now she's got a captain's license in Florida, and we're going to have a story about her. Great wow. lady. Maybe we could well, have her on, uh, Robert. Can you get me her um, her contact info? And we'll see. I'll we'll try to get on. a hold of her this week and get yeah. her on the radio next week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, no, no, I was, uh, I was um, going to mention another young lady that, that uh, I know Robert's worked on, but I, I'm sorry, I apologize, it slipped my mind. Welcome to my world, Carolyn. You're hanging around me too long. I don't know what's happening with her phone. She Hello? she just kind of fades out. Your phone broke up there, Carolyn. Yeah. Oh no, no. I, I I'm not sure if it's if it's my phone. I'll get to a different location in the household. But uh, no, I, I said Rascal. I'm I'm kind of feeling like like you are sometimes. Need a little. I need to pour some of the coffee on top of my head. <laughs> I've been doing pretty good. I'm drinking mine as we speak. So. I've been doing pretty good without it. And there were there are times though when the, the cobwebs don't want to go away in the morning. Uh, this morning wasn't too bad, but there was a couple of them there. My gosh, yesterday morning I, I woke up uh, really really early. I don't normally get up too early on Saturdays. I usually get up around eight thirty nine, and I got up at like six o'clock, and I couldn't for the life of me go back to sleep. And I was like all day long. I was in that daze, couldn't couldn't completely clear my head. One of those things. I don't know if you guys go through that. I don't know, is that normal as you get older? <laughs> This is the first time I've been in this so. age. Oh, my gosh. Some of the stuff I'm going through is like, oh, gee, Manny. And I don't know if it's being caused yeah, by... I got my, my first vaccination yesterday. Oh, my goodness. You, you got the COVID so vaccination? radio stations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's too much. For... Yeah, I, I pick up uh, radio stations now when I walk, so... <clears throat> Do you know there was a story about that? Some guy who went to the dentist and he had something done and, and, and it ended up being that the dentist, when he put the filling in his mouth, it happened to be something happened where he was actually receiving a radio station through his mouth. His mouth was acting as a receiver. That was many years ago. It was, it was big news. How the heck this guy ever did it? Who hope knows? it was a good station. I don't know. It was just crazy. I think it was more noise than it was, you know, something like you tune in a station and it comes in clear. It was more like noise, but you could tell oh, it was so radio. He couldn't, like, hold his mouth open and, and yeah. play songs? Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it was crazy. <laughs> you imagine that wherever you go, yeah, every time you open your mouth, or if, when it's really quiet, as, he, uh, as I recall, 
when it was really quiet, he could hear it. The quieter the area, the more he could hear it. And the more noise around it, the more it drowned it out. It was very light. The sound was very light. But you could tell it was, a, it was like that uh, static that you get from one station to another. But you could tell there was a station coming in in the background. It was crazy. It was nuts. Never heard of anything so crazy in all my life. Of course, you know, what we've been through the last 10 months, <laughs> nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, nothing, nothing can shock you now. So. <laughs> we've all been, we've seen it all. My goodness, do you know of any um, any tournaments coming up? I do not. Um, as a matter of fact, I sent uh, Summer a note yesterday. If she wanted to post the uh, the schedule in the magazine, I haven't heard back from her yet. So I saw a post by her. She is, you know, again, this is the fishing community here in South Florida, and I'm sure it may be similar in other places, but because I'm here in South Florida and I see it firsthand, I, I just want to give credit to people when credit is due. She put a post up. One of the families is has a recurring cancer coming back, and they've stepped up to the financial plate to see to it that they can help them financially. This is the, the kind of people that we have here in South Florida. They step up to the plate when people are in need, and I'm very, very honored to have had her on the show several times. The fishing community is great about supporting people. Yeah. yeah. Chasing Tails is the name of the tournament, and it's T-A-I-L-Z. You can find her on Facebook. I think you can find it online. It's a great thing. You get to go out fishing, and you get to do what you like. And if you are fortunate enough to catch something and win a prize, hey, on you know that's icing on the cake. But you know that the money that you have invested is going to help a family in need. And here's the evidence of it, the post that she put up today. Sorry, I'm going to go on the other one. All right. Well, I hear Carol in the background. We'll get to you, Carol. Hang on just a second. I hear Carol Strickland with uh, Mermaid Vodka in the background back there. Robert, anything else you want to share with us before you, uh, before I let you go this morning? No, nope, I'd like some Mermaid Vodka and my V8 juice <laughs> if she's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he couldn't refuse that one. <laughs> All right, my friend. God bless you. I greatly appreciate you taking. Are you going to go uh, to the park today? Well, it's kind of ooky day, isn't it? Probably not no, a park not day. not today. It's, it's going to rain here shortly. So. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like here. Well, God bless you, my friend. Wish you an awesome day regardless of the weather. Let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. I'll be thinking about you when I'm down in Mexico this week. If you've got anything for the magazine, send it to me. Oh, I'm sure we'll have something. Absolutely. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do that this week. All right. Here we go. Thank you. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today do you have an unusual pet did you know that the rainforest clinic in loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets they see pets that other vets don't parrots and chickens ducks geese turtles snakes goats pigs lizards and even monkeys are you a beekeeper dr club the first of her kind in the area yes she takes care of bees as well Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 
561-795-4878. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Oh, I grab my vision pole. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, good morning. We are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. An honor and a privilege to have you join in with us this morning. I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks if you want to protect what you love to the max. Who are you going to call? Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Thank you so much, Rascala. Always, always love hanging out on a Sunday with you. And we have Carol with Mermaid Vodka coming up here in just a moment. I wanted to uh, mention that there are several different ways that you can find our show. The easiest of all those, of course, that we have an app. You can download the app. It's absolutely free. There is no spyware. There is no adware. There is no push notifications. It's just an easy way to listen to our network. If you don't want to download the app or if you have the TuneIn app, if you look for Marina Rock Radio, and a big, big thank you to Marina Rock for allowing us to utilize the airwaves that they have, uh, you can go to Marina Rock Radio on the TuneIn app, and you can find us there every Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock. Or you can, if you're on the web, you can go to our home site, www.wctfm.com. That is our home network web station. There's a player there. If you are a Facebook fanatic, you can go to Fishing in Florida on Facebook and click on Contact Us. That's another way that you can listen to us. So we try to make it as easy as we can for everybody. If you are on Facebook, by the way, please give us a like. Uh, I get a lot of visitors on Facebook, but they don't give us a like. And uh, the more likes that we get, the more relevant that we are when people look for us. So if you would, please, if you are going to visit us on Facebook, please give us a like. I greatly appreciate it. So now, without any further ado... Let me welcome the one and only Carol with Mermaid Vodka, the finest in the land. Good morning, my dear. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on. And I am so sorry I wasn't on mute there a little earlier. No, no um, worries. But, uh, yeah, you, you you covered it well. And, yes, we'll get that Mermaid Vodka up to uh, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, or Carolyn. you can go to his local uh, Total Wine or ABC and purchase it there if he needs it right away. <laughs> and you know what else, Carol? What what, what else we can do is um, put the link to purchase it on our uh, Facebook page, too. So that way that uh, folks that are not in the local area can still, still have a drop shipped right to them. That's right. We sell, we're, we're, we're in all of the Total Wines throughout the state of Florida. But that, if you're out of state, you're going to have to go online and and order it and we'll get it to you uh our shipping rates have gone down we've been fortunate to um our distributors negotiated some some really really reasonable fedex ground rates so the only thing is somebody 21 has to be home to sign for it and that's usually easy enough to arrange oh 21 anyway that was a long time ago for me (laughs) 21 what's 21 uh go ahead girl go ahead i was gonna Uh, say Oh, go ahead, Carolyn. No, I, I heard Carol, and um, the, you know, whenever someone says, "Go ahead, Carol," we both start talking. So, yeah. go ahead. Um, and I'm sorry, I stepped over you. <laughs> no problem. I, we we both go by the same name, so you know, I'm I'm flattered when someone calls me Carolyn. Um, so uh, yeah, we were just down in Isla Morada speaking of 21, and uh, we were after we had gotten back in from fishing, we were sitting in uh, the hot tub at the Caribbean Resort, and. Uh, there was a young lady there with her family celebrating her 21st birthday. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, we introduced her to Mermaid Vodka. She loved it. You know, obviously, we made sure she was uh, responsible in drinking it. But um, she was celebrating the big 2-1, and it was a great group of uh, 20-somethings and their parents and really nice group of people. And we were kind of capped off our day because we had such an awesome day out, out fishing offshore there um, for uh, uh, Blue Line Tile, Noe Gruber, 
Mm -mm. Uh, We did some trolling, deep dropping. I mean, we really mixed it up, and it was uh, really, really good fish in there about uh, two weeks ago. Wow. Well, the Keys themselves are just the whole atmosphere down there is so different than than anywhere else in the state. It's it's just a completely different way of life. So just being down there, (laughs) just being down there is a is an enjoyment for me. Uh, it is it's a, a slow, I guess is the way to describe it. It's kind of a slow, slower way of life. The, everybody's not so much a hurry like it, like around here. <laughs> it's just different. It's a different way. I, I was fortunate to have some, been able to spend some time down there years ago with some friends who, who uh, had a, a home down there. And we would go down there for a couple of weeks at a time during the summer. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, very, very small town kind of attitude. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, just uh, I loved it all the way around. Just great stuff. Well, I'm glad you were able to get down there and do some of that. What do you have? You got anything planned coming up here? Um, nothing in the out of the ordinary. You know, we usually go out a couple times a week, uh, weather permitting, and uh, we'll we'll do a late afternoon early evening troll uh try to get some tuna and then um you know sometimes we do offshore uh not offshore uh, snapper fishing after we uh finish trolling really just depends on the weather of course like it does for everybody else we'd love to get out and get a sailfish or two but um today you know we're (laughs) (laughs) today like sometimes life gets in the way of fishing so we're (laughs) we're uh booked up today with super bowl we're um doing a promotion and Yeah, yeah. Have so you got good, um, Have you got a party planned for today? We do. We do. Um, starting a little bit later today, we've, we've got a uh, promo to do, and then uh, we'll we'll just do something laid back ourselves uh, on the grill, or just kind of celebrate winding down the week. It's been uh, fortunately uh, for us uh, at Mermaid Vodka. It's been a busy week. Yay. Business is starting to pick up. Yes, it's great to see the local businesses opening back up. Um, you know, really getting ramped back up um, with uh, capacity, and they've really done well. Uh, a lot of the restaurants have done so well with you know getting a handle on the the PPE and all the requirements. I honestly am so impressed with how these businesses have been able to adapt. Um, to what's required and yeah. uh, stay safe. And, you know, it's a, it's a tribute to them. It's, that's what small business is all about. I know we talk about it a lot on your show, but really small business is all about keeping the family going and adapting right. and just doing whatever you have to do to keep your business running. And, right. and we're thankful. We're really thankful for the small operators that have, have come back out and um, you know, opened back up, reordered mermaid vodka to serve behind their bar or put on the, the liquor store shelf. And, um, you know, Tittle Wine and ABC uh, kept us going a lot during uh, the, the COVID uh, shutdowns. But, you know, it's really, you got to have in the liquor business, you really have to have all of the above. You've mm-hmm. got to have the bars and restaurants because if people are going to buy it in a liquor store, they really want to go somewhere and enjoy it once they have yep. tried it. Yep. Yep. I agree. It is some of the finest that I have ever had the opportunity to try, I can tell you that. And uh, there's no question about the quality. Once you taste it, there's no question about the quality that goes into it, the work, the manship that goes into it. I'm very pleased to hear that you're picking up a little bit. You know, finally for us, uh, it's been almost a year now that we've been free-falling, financially free-falling as a, as a company. Um, and for those of you who don't understand what that means, that means we've been losing money for almost a year because of this virus. And it's been extremely difficult financially for us. And finally, this last month, we saw a little bit uh, and a glimpse, an eye blink's worth of uh, increase in business, which we are ever so grateful for. So hopefully this is a trend that will continue, that we will continue to see a little more business. All of us, all of these small businesses that have been, some of them have been absolutely devastated by this. They're not coming back. It's so sad. And Carolyn, uh, excuse me, Carol had said one of the most key things to this is these are families. These are families that are being devastated. And so whenever you have the opportunity to deal with a small, locally owned, family owned company, by all means, take that opportunity. And you're not going to be just a customer with them. You know, this is redundant. I say this a lot, but this is true. This is really now more important than ever before. 
you're going to be a, like an extended component of their family. You're not just a number. You're not uh, like you are with these large corporations. You're far more meaningful to them than you are to a corporation. So whenever you have the opportunity, if you're looking at a product and as you have another product that competes against that product, and the product that you're looking at is coming from a locally owned, family owned company. The thing about um, that I didn't know until probably, I don't know, th- three or four times after I've talked to Carol, everything is in Florida. Everything that's, that, am I right, Carol? Everything that, that is done is in Florida for this thing. Is that correct? Yeah, you're, you're, at, you're absolutely right. Everything, everything that, that um, makes up mermaid vodka, the corn, the water, the bottle, the cork, um, is all sourced um, from Florida, well, Florida Farm for the corn, of course, uh, organic corn, and, um, you know, the, the um, vendors for the bottles and the corks and all that. Everybody's local um, to Florida. Either they're up in Tampa or our distiller in Fort Myers, the farm that grows the corn up in Jacksonville. Um, you know, we're really, really particular about that fact mm-hmm. because, um, you know, there's a lot of products out there that say they're, oh, Florida. Well, start doing a little research and you'll find that that's not the case. And that's yeah. okay. But, you know, you yeah, have but to it's be not, true and it's not okay to say that it's all Florida. Yeah. 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 It's, that's misleading. And that's, that's why I wanted to make sure what I was saying was correct and ask you. So here's the thing. If you're buying this product, you're helping support not only a locally owned, family owned business, but all these other businesses that have to provide her with what she needs in order to bring her product forward. And it's all here in Florida. And here's the thing that I have found out through the research that I've done. When you're spending money locally, uh, up to 63 cents, I think it is, and maybe even a little more than that, of, of every dollar that you spend, because it's spent locally, somehow comes back, either through different taxes for the municipality. There's a variety of ways that it comes back through the payroll of, of the, um, the local area about 62 to 63 cents of that comes back when you're dealing with a locally owned family owned corporation. When you're dealing with a big corp, these big global corporations that are all throughout the planet, only about 40 cents of that comes back to the local area. The other side of the coin of that is when you, again, when you're dealing with some of these small businesses, you'll find that the small businesses, because they've been through the rough times, they know what it's like to have to go through a rough time, they are far more willing to reach out to the community and help the community that's in a rough time. They're far more willing to do it than these big corporations, because the big corporations have one main goal in life, and that is to make money. They don't want to give you money. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they want to make money. So these are some of the things that I try to remind people. These are the advantages of dealing with small corporations. You're helping a family. You're not helping some CEO buy a third house somewhere, you know, whether it's here in Florida or somewhere up north, a, a winter home or whatever. You're helping put food on the table. You're helping provide for a roof over their heads. You're helping provide for an education if they're going to saving for, for a college education. There's a lot of positive things that when you're, when you're dealing with a small locally owned company. Carolyn has a, a small locally owned family owned company, Atlas Tracks. Carol has Mermaid Vodka. I have Laser Technologies. Any of these companies that you deal with will be, again, you're I'm like an extended component of our family. You're going to get far better customer service from any one of us than you would any of these large corporate. I can promise you without a blink of an eye's worth of doubt, you would get much better service from any one of us if you were dealing with the same product on a large corporation. There was no, there's no comparison. Uh, anyway, so those are the advantage. I, I tell you, it's a quality product. It's the, I, I, honestly, it's the best that I've ever tried, and it is really an awesome, an awesome product. Again, it's a family-owned company. You're supporting so many things, everything from Florida, everything. Uh, when we talk about, uh, for example, we, we've spoken about Atlas Tracks many times on on the uh, the show, when you're dealing with Atlas Tracks, it's not unlikely for somebody to call Carolyn at on a Friday night, <laughs> right, Carolyn? On a Friday night, Carolyn, I need whatever it is I need. Okay, I'll be over there. I'll drive if it's, you're close enough. She'll drive it to you. You're gonna think. You well, can- yeah, abso- absolutely. Let me tell you what happened um, over the weekend. We had a customer fishing a tournament in the Bahamas. His EPIRB went off, which notified the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard called his family. 
um, the family had user ID and password to log on and see that at least he was moving, you know, at like a trolling speed, uh, assured the Coast Guard that he wasn't thinking. Uh, they didn't take no for an answer, and they ended up calling me, and I said, look, this, this boat's moving. It's going seven miles an hour. It's not under duress. Come to find out that the EPIRB, which is an emergency beacon, just went off for no reason. So, so yeah, they can they can get a hold of myself. They can get a hold of, hold of Carol. I know people can get a hold of you, Rascala. You're yeah. you're up all night, yeah. so it's it's an important thing. It's an advantage, and it's a good advantage, and everybody wins. That's the thing that really, when all is said and done, everybody wins. And when everybody wins, I like that because I'm part of everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. and you know what? I was just going to say, I've been with Carolyn fishing when she's gotten those calls. And she drops what she, whatever she's doing, takes the call, and helps her customer. It's really impressive. You don't see that in a lot of um, people. She is very dedicated to her customers and her business. So I, I, I use her as a role model because she treats every single customer with, with uh, kid gloves and really works with them to uh, – Give them whatever they need. She's there. Awesome. It's so it's just really impressive. We were out in the middle, of the, <laughs> the middle of the ocean, and there she is, uh, you know, on her satellite phone talking to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. If you want technology, yeah, well, you got to talk to Carolyn. If you want the latest and greatest in technology, when it when it has to do with communication or it has to do with protecting something that you have, the latest and greatest. Carolyn has it. I'm telling you, it's amazing some of the stuff that you have, Carolyn. Oh, I thank you. And Carol, I have to tell you, I am so sorry. Carol's part of our ladies, uh, Pink Ladies Mermaid Vodka fishing team, and we got a last-minute, last-night invite, invite to go down to Mexico and fish real captivating for two days and take some photos. And I'm I'm so sad you can't be there, but I know there's some mermaid vodka on that boat. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. That that eases it a little bit. I'm I'm <laughs> sorry I'm not going to be there either. I've had so many meetings lined up and stuff, so. Um, it's a blessing and a curse, but you know what you have to do when business uh, dictates yeah. that you have to do what you have to do. And I know you girls can have a great time of post lots of pictures. Um, yeah, absolutely. Real and they did is the best out there. Yeah, and they uh, they told me they got forty sailfish yesterday. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> awesome! Awesome! Wow, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so uh, Doreen and I will head out. We'll uh, make sure we uh, stay in touch with you. Just a one quick one, one and a half day trip. So we'll uh, we'll definitely stay in touch. Mm, fantastic, as we say at Mermaid Vodka. Fantastic. <laughs> so we do, uh, just a little shout out there. We do have some, uh, we do a lot of merchandise. Uh, that's part of our, our business model. We sell our merchandise. People love it, which we're very thankful for. So we just launched a uh, line of ladies um, colored colored shirts so we've got pink and light green light blue yellow the really really pretty colors they're ups uh 50 uh, fishing shirts so uh they look great they look great if you're going out out for lunch they look great if you're out on the boat they're protecting you uh any anywhere you're outside nice ups um, coverage in those shirts so i did want to get that out there because i personally picked the colors and i love the shirts they're just really um they're doing really well online and we get them out to you in two to three day shipping so nobody has to wait cool all yeah. right miss carol we are out of time on this segment i want to say thank you thank you thank you for taking time to share with us and thank you for a really nice product that you put out let me give carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you and we'll go to a break i wish you an awesome day my friend regardless of the weather i wish you an awesome day thanks for scala you too great carolyn she probably muted herself again. She's good for that. No, no, I mean, I try not to be loud. Hey, I was going to say, have a, have a great day. I wish you could give you a big hug, and I'll make sure uh, we'll put some sailfish on the boat for you. Awesome. Have a great trip. Safe travel. All righty. Right line. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Fish. Fish Florida. Fish in. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitt. She provides a concierge service. 
Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. All I grab my vision pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and falling on. When the sun shines all day. It is called me a group of fishing and falling on. Oh yeah. Fishing and falling on. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Truly an honor to have you tune in and allow us to share with you some of the stuff that we have here. Now, if you've missed any part of the show, there will be an archive set up. And the fastest way to find the archive is if you go to our Facebook page. And uh, you go to the F- Fishing in Florida show on Facebook, you'll find a link there to the archives that we have set up. Uh, several different ways you can listen to us. If you're on the web, www.wcetfm.com. If you uh, are on Facebook, click on Contact Us on the Facebook page, and you'll go to our live server. If you have the TuneIn app, you can find us under Marina Rock Radio. Thank you, Marina Rock. Greatly appreciate it. They allow us to use, utilize their airwaves on Sunday mornings. Uh, my goodness, a bunch of different ways that you can find us. If you look for us, you easily found Fishing in Florida every Sunday morning from 8 to 10 a.m. This morning I have Carolyn, and Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. And what I like to say about Carolyn, if you want to protect what you love to the max, who are you going to talk to? Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Thanks for having me on Sunday, Riscala. You know I like hanging out. Well, I, and I enjoy having you on, my dear. Okay, I think we have our next guest, and I, if I have my information correctly, that would be Skipper Gentry. I hope that's right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Good, good. So um, I want to do a little introduction for Skipper. I've known him for quite some time. He is comes from a legend, a uh, family legend of fishing out of Moorhead, North Carolina. He runs Carolina uh, Gentleman Sport Fishing here out of Florida. Uh, so he's, he's constantly here. And his latest venture is an island property that people can go, stay at his homes that he put up, and then fish his beautiful 60-foot sport fish. Oh, so awesome. welcome to the show, Skipper. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate it. How awesome is that? Now, tell us tell us a little more about that, the, the island. That yeah, so, you know, we're, we're primarily based out of uh, Spooner's Bay Lodge, and it's in North Andros, so we're fishing the area known as the Pocket. That's that's our backyard, um, and Andros is obviously in the Bahamas. So a lot of times when people are fishing, you know, Chubb Key, they're actually fishing on our side of the Pocket. You know, those guys run across. And uh, we're fishing there on the edge of the, of the Jolter Keys and those areas for Blue Marlins mainly. Um, of course, you know, we've had Wahoo Bite in January and February. It's typically been pretty good, but this year we've been really happy. Uh, you know, the Blue Marlin Bite's been good in January. You know, we've caught them each day we've gone out. Um, you know, nothing nothing over 400 pounds, but it's still good to have nice Blue Marlin action con- pretty consistently. 
Um, and then, of course, the bone fishing in Andros is phenomenal. So, you know, we've got three bone fish boats behind the house, two houses, uh, a 60 foot sport fish. And, you know, you're basically on an island by your, or a beach area all by yourself. Uh, private, there's a reef behind the house for lobstering and snorkeling and all that stuff. And, you know, so we opened up last year in March, which was awesome timing, of course. COVID hit. We had one group of customers before everything got shut down. And, of course, with the travel restrictions, people were not allowed to come to the Bahamas. So uh, that was a little tough. We're up and running now. People are getting there. We're getting booked up. And the fishing is excellent in the Bahamas. Uh, right. And, and now Riscala, Riscala um, as, uh, as, you, as Riscala is a um, uh, pet rescue, Skipper has rescued a famous dog named Lexi, who is a three-legged black lab. And if you look at any of Skipper's, videos on Carolina Gentleman or on his Facebook page, you'll see Lexi's right in the action, trying oh. to pick up uh, Mahi and Dolphin right off the ground and <laughs> doesn't even know she's missing a leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's a constant on the boat. Everywhere the boat goes, the dog goes. I think That's she, awesome. She <laughs> logged over like 9,000 miles on the boat last year, I think oh, it was. Wow. I mean, yeah, everywhere that we, we traveled, I mean, you know, like I said, once the COVID hit last year, the bite was good up in North Carolina, so we ran, uh, took the boat, ran up there, Fished out of Moorhead, fished out of um, Oregon Inlet. Uh, did an overnighter, just my mate Clay, Kelly, and Lexi and I caught a few. We caught three whites, a blue, and pulled off a swordfish. Just the three of us had a great time. But now we're back down here, and like I said, Lexi goes. Every time a boat goes somewhere, she's on it. <laughs> That's awesome. So I want to ask you about the uh, – this may be a silly question, but I'm, I'm curious. If, if someone is to – uh, partake in the island adventure, where do they get the food and beverage from if you're all out there by yourself? Where does that come from? Do you bring it yourself? Where did the... You bring it with you or what? What I didn't hear the What do you bring if, what with if, you? If we, if we partake in the island adventure, going, taking out and going out to this little island that you have, since it's since it's so private and it's and it's away from everything, what do you do about food and beverage and stuff like that? Oh, uh, well, Andrew's... Andrews is the largest island, the least densely populated island. Um, so, no, we do have – one reason I chose this area because it's undeveloped. That so gives me opportunities. You know, we're looking at getting permitted now to put slips in so other boats can come and, and stay. Uh, we do have grocery stores. We have a fresh water supply, which is huge in the Bahamas. And a small airport uh, with daily flights in is only about – 15 minutes from the house so we have it all right there oh wow just, okay there's no resorts there's no i mean you're if you check us out on you know any of our social media sites carolina gentlemen sport fishing or spooners bay you know we've got a few aerial shots in there you'll see you're you're by yourself on a beautiful reef um but yeah there is there is grocery uh we have a cook there for you you know we've got you handled and it's not just a situation where hey you come here you stay in a house and we only see you on the fishing days. You know, we're right there. We host people. Most of the people that come here are repeat. So they're like our friends and family now, you know. So uh, we're there to host you on your vacation, take you to the grocery store, show you the blue holes. Uh, That's awesome. You know, whatever you need, we, we're, we're there for you. So basically I host people on vacation and we catch some marlins in the, as well. Oh, my god! And bonefish. So uh, it's probably not out of the question to say that if you're li- if you catch fish, which you're more than likely going to, because it's an awesome place to go fishing, you could have them cleaned and you could be eating them that evening. Is that would that be out of the question? No, that's pretty standard issue for us. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. you get you get there. We, you know, you have it prepared, or you can prepare it yourself. Um, we clean it and everything for you, just like you know everywhere we go. How cool is that? And what? Yeah, and it's funny. I ran into Skipper and Kelly last night having some dinner, and uh, they were telling me that he's going to be working on putting in a little marina. So, you know, even if you, you might not be staying at the re- the two homes they have there, you can pop in, uh, you know, potentially get some fuel. Uh, so this is, you know, something that's coming up in the future, and that makes him a full-service marina. And even making flight arrangements for Scala, if you need to get over there, he can help, you know, he and Kelly can help you get through Nassau. Um, they have little taxi uh, airplanes that can shuttle right back over to where the property is on Andros. Uh, so it's it's full uh, from you know hand walking you all the way to get there. So the island's pretty far away, but it's really it's right there. But whenever Skipper and Kelly are helping with the arrangements, yeah, 
like Carolyn said, we, we do help everybody. You know, a lot of people are worried. You know, the media has kind of shown that it's difficult to travel, which it's not the easiest. But when you have someone there that has done it with the health restrictions and the health visas, you know, we've got that down pat. So, you know, when you contact us, we help you get there. We help you with the confusing things you may have some trouble with. And, it's, you know, the Bahamas is open. You know, people are coming. Flights are coming every day. And, you know, we're getting booked up. So I'm very, cool. very fortunate that people are, are moving and traveling and, and wanting to come fish. And the fishery is awesome. Uh, we enjoy our customers. Probably, we enjoy fishing probably more than they do, you know. <laughs> well, you, you – pretty much answered some of the questions I was going to ask. And one of them was going to be how difficult is the travel from here to there? Cause I know we have a young lady that comes on from time to time. Her name is Stephanie Lynn and she's out there in the Bahamas. And at one time she said it was totally shut down, locked down, completely yeah, locked down. Right. Nobody was going, nobody was coming. That's it, pal. So I take it that it has changed considerably since that time. Yeah, last year they did shut us down. I mean, like, you could not arrive in the Bahamas, and you couldn't leave your house yeah, from yeah. Monday to Friday. Yeah. Fortunately, our backyard was a beautiful one that we could fish and everything from, so staying in our house was not so bad. But, yeah, they were locked down. Now you're not. You're free to go go and come as you please. Oh, good. You just have to do a, a health visa before you arrive, and uh, that's pretty much it. And also now I'm sure you've heard that, to come back in the United States, you've got to get a COVID test. Well, once again, fortunately, the uh, the clinic is between the house and the airport, and you go in there, you get a test, and you get your results back while you wait. It's about a twenty minute process total. So that's easy, you know. So we've kind of gotten all of the obstacles um, figured out, and and like I said, we're there to hold your hand, get you through there, get you to the airport, and make sure you get home safely. So and you know what's really uh, awesome, too, on um, Rascala, is that his 60-foot boat comes back and forth, so sometimes it's stationed in Pompano, so folks can charter it if, if it happens to be in the area. Sometimes it's up in Moorhead City. Oh. Um, Skipper does carry one of my solar track trackers on his big boat, so we always know where he is as far as uh, you know being way offshore like he does. And uh, I think he's going to put some uh, trackers on his little flats boats uh, coming up this week, too, just to make sure when he leaves, you know, that uh, uh, he knows where the boats are and the clients are just in case something breaks down. Yeah, on the flats boats, it's really important. You know, I guess two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the Jolter Keys are some of the most amazing areas and beautiful. Um, and you Google Earth that area, it's just it's unbelievable. But it's, you know, pretty much out of cell range. You know, we don't have Coast Guard there or CETO. So I think having, you know, my peace of mind to say, oh, man, you know, they should be back by now. I'm hoping that the bone fishing is really good and they're still just catching bone fish, but I'd like to be able to look and see that they're moving. And in the fact that they don't get back, I can get in the other skiff and go right to where they are and get them. You know, so I think, I think it's just kind of a responsibility of a logic owner to make sure their customers are safe and, and that uh, we know where they are at all times. Well, I would say that you have, sounds like you have every avenue covered, which makes it a lot easier for somebody to come over, particularly when we're, literally leaving the country and entering into a different country and they have different uh, rules and regulations in order to be able to get in. I could see where having someone like you who has been through it makes it much, much easier to get in and get out. Uh, and what you're describing is, my gosh, is like a paradise. I can't imagine being on a, a little island like that, uh, kind of all to yourself, so to speak. And if you feel like fishing, you just step out in the backyard and go fishing. It's great. I love it. Oh, yeah. The, the other day, well, I guess a week ago or whatever, a couple of weeks ago, we were backing down a little Blue Marlin, and Kelly was at the house doing work, and she could see us out there from the <laughs> from the port <laughs> backing down on the Marlin. You know? So the fishery wow. is close by, nice, easy day, relatively calm compared to most places in the world, and, uh, you know, it's just a good time. No, no, no crowds out there fishing, nobody running over your stuff. It's just a great a great location to get out there and fish. Wow. So um, before I forget, you know what we'll, uh, we'll make sure we do is we post up a link for um, Spooners Bay on our, on our radio page. So uh, folks can see it. And, uh, 
you know, I'm sorry, I stepped over you, Rosella. Okay, because you you basically covered what I wanted to do. So give them an opportunity if, if people want to find out more, how do they do that? And, and we will. We'll put up the, the link as well on the uh, Fishing in Florida page on uh, on Facebook. But uh, Okay. Yeah, people... we've got a, a YouTube channel, Carolina Gentleman Sport Fishing. And if you look up Carolina Gentleman Sport Fishing on anything, you'll find our Instagram and Facebook and yada, yada, yada. Check out our videos and stuff. We try to do a good job on that. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, Spooner's Bay is uh, Spooner's Bay on Facebook, correct? That's right. That's right. Spooner's absolutely. Bay Lodge on Facebook. So, yeah, for people right now, we know we have fuel in Morgan's Bluff Harbor. So, you know, we're conveniently located. Like, so if you're going from the States to anywhere south of Grand Bahama or Abaco, you know, Southern Bahamas, on the way to Exumas, Dominican Republic, St. Thomas, if you're headed south, you go right by us on the way to Nassau. So if you'd like to come in, we've got, you know, 10 foot of water. we got fuel dock and customs will come to your boat. Um and and check you in right there so it's pretty easy process our fuel prices are like pretty cheap you know about 50 to 70 cents cheaper than a lot of the islands wow. so uh, on diesel wow so, all right my uh, friend yeah we're, we're getting there but it's a slow process you know just a one-man show on a not <laughs> trying to make it work well you now if i get a couple of docks in at a time you know and get people coming in and renting from us and we'll we'll grow you know, as people, as people patronize us. It sounds like an awesome, uh, experience. Uh, and, uh, we'd be happy to have you back on sometime in the future and you can give us an update as to what the latest and greatest that is going on. In the meantime, I'm, I'm out of time on this particular slide. I want to say thank you. I greatly appreciate you taking the time. Are you here in Florida right now? Or are you over in the Bahamas? Yeah, I'm in Florida for this week. I got here last Wednesday. I'm headed out this Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, I heard Carolyn say that she saw you last night, but I wasn't sure if you'd left or not and if you're still here. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Greatly, greatly appreciate you taking the time to call in and share with us. It sounds like something out of a dream, really, <laughs> to be able to go out the backyard and just go fishing like that. Oh, my gosh. I wish you an well, awesome thanks day. thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. I wish you an awesome day, regardless of the weather. Let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you, and we'll go to a quick break. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I'm sure Kelly's in the background there in pajamas. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you guys have a great day, and I'll uh, I'll catch up with you in the next day or two, and uh, be safe. All right, thank y'all. Have a good day. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida Show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitted. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Owner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. 
Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. Oh, I grab my vision pole. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Archives will be, uh, links to the archives will be on the Fishing in Florida Show on Facebook. Fastest way to find them. We are on YouTube, but I haven't. For the life of me, I haven't figured out how to make the YouTube thing work. If you put fishing in Florida uh, as a query on YouTube, you'll get everything but us. You'll get a bazillion re- uh, returns, and none of them <laughs> will be us. So the easiest way to find it right now is if you are on Facebook, go to our Facebook page, and you'll find a link there to all of our archives. So anything that you've missed is always uh, you're able to go back and, and listen to again. A big thank you to Marina Rock Radio. If you have the TuneIn app, that's one of the ways that you can listen to us. Marina Rock is on TuneIn. And uh, a big thank you to them for allowing us to share the airwaves with them every Sunday morning. And uh, another way you can listen to us is if you're on the Internet, go to our homepage at www.wcetfm.com, and you'll find a player there as well. I believe the easiest of all the ways is we have a an app. It's free. It has no adware. It has no spyware. It has no push notifications. Just an easy way to listen to our network. It is uh, found at m- any of the major stores under WCETFM, and again, it's free. And let me welcome back my co-host. That would be Carolyn. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, Rascala. And I think we have Jeff Tilly. Jeff Tilly is also known as the Oyster Boss. Welcome, and Jeff. How are you, my friend? Yes, thank you. Good morning, Rascala and Carolyn. Good to be with you all. Happy Sunday. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Same to you. I, I keep getting reminded about the Super Bowl Sunday. Um, let's see. It's, it's, I think I'm having a problem. Okay. Well, there we go. Having a problem with my microphone this morning. It's just, it doesn't want to cooperate. So tell me, uh, Jeff, I know that you're up there in uh, northern Florida, right? Yes, that's true. And uh, you are yeah. you ha- are you the one who has the oyster farm? Is that you, or are you the distributor? I don't That's remember. me. Yeah. Well, yeah. That plus that plus a few other things. And by the way, I think all of us that are in the oyster business are very gratified uh, that there is such a thing as Super Bowl Sunday uh, <laughs> because it's <laughs> it's good for business. But yeah, we uh, we're farmers up here in the Panhandle, where the Panhandle connects to the rest of the state, um, also known as the Big Bend. And uh, also, we are uh, we're wild harvesting too. So we we got our you know we we've got our our feet firmly planted in both industries here in the state. And we're only by the way we only handle a Florida oyster. We don't we don't bring any oysters in from out of state. So awesome. Uh, we're all about the Florida yeah the Florida product and clams too. By the way, we're now doing clams. So. Cool. And your product yeah. is is it only available up in northern Florida, or is it available down? Do you get it down here in the southern part of Florida? Well, um, gosh, there's just not a one-word answer to that question. You actually introduced me to Neil and Danielle with the Ghost Trap, um, yeah, uh, uh, Ghost Trap folks, uh, right. 360. Right. Yeah, yeah. What a great liaison uh, that's become for me. And they, 
They're headquartered in St. Pete, as I'm sure you probably quite well know. Uh, and they're making introductions for Oyster Boss in the area down there. And right. I'm really excited about the opportunities. So to answer your question, we are only at this moment in time uh, marketing in the region up here. Um, but I've certainly had my eyes fixed on Tampa. And by the way, I'll let you know when I'm there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, I'm on, I'm on yeah. the other side. But uh, I've, Captain Neal is somebody that caught my attention, I guess, a couple of years back with – I was so impressed with what they did with the uh, the crab traps because a lot of times people do mm-hmm. something on the surface that sounds good, but then when you dig into it, you go, oh, it's not all that great. Uh, what caught me mm-hmm. was um, they take the traps and then they just don't throw them in the landfill, you know, like other people might do. They would just pick up the trash. Right. And, you know, it's just more trash. It's just trash in a different area. To find something right, that right. you can do with it that would be meaningful uh that's what caught my attention and uh, when he said yeah we take it and we rebuild um different reefs and stuff and a lot of it is has to do with oysters I went, holy smokes now so the oyster yeah, no, no. the oyster industry yeah. i know for a while was suffering are you is it coming back now well the wild harvest here in franklin county which is where we farm by the way uh is totally shut down franklin county is home of the world-renowned Apalachicola Bay. Wow. And the bay, you know, the bay's been in decline uh, since the BP oil spill, so a decade. The bay's been in decline for a decade. And finally, the FWC just uh, shut it down for five years. Mm. So we're, we're about six months into that shutdown. So it'll be closed for another four and a half years as they rehabilitate as much of it as they can and try to put Humpty Dumpty back together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. And uh, we're, we are wild harvesting, as I mentioned, not just farming, but we've moved our wild harvest uh, efforts down to Yankee Town, Florida, which is uh, not too too terribly far north of the Tampa area. So a lot of folks down there may 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 be quite well aware of Yankee Town. So uh, it's growing a great great oyster, and we're glad to be handling it. I'm really proud of not just that oyster, but also the farmed oysters that we're making as well. So do you know the area now that they've, they've- completely shut down are they attempting to rebuild it are they working on 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 uh cleaning the area out or, or is it just gonna yeah. wait well, for there, it naturally there, there, to return yeah there is a there yeah there is there is a one word answer to that question and that is feverishly <laughs> they're they're working really hard Good. uh the fwc has a 21 million dollar grant that came i believe from one of the federal agencies and oh there's just a ton of money flowing uh, into the area to um, rehabilitate the beds and and oh, good. and walk back walk back the things that have basically caused the bay to be you know in, in the problems that it's that it's currently exi- you know existing in and and furthermore I think now the focus is no longer on trying to persecute Atlanta over quote stealing our water now mm-hmm. you may know what I'm talking about there the big infamous decades long lawsuit that was just an absolute waste yeah. In my opinion, yeah. Um, yeah. So it probably made a lot of money for a lot of lawyers, <laughs> and uh, of course, we know it made a lot of headlines. Yeah. So there was a lot of ink ink manufacturers that mm-hmm. did really really well because of that wow. that effort. But it it meant nothing. <clears throat> it meant nothing to the bay whatsoever. <clears throat> well, that's so, good. That's good to hear. I uh, I had an experience where I was uh, in stationed at Tyndall Air Base, and uh, I had uh, the experience of enjoying Apalachicola oysters and. Um, there's after having that experience and being down here, it's just not the same. They're just, I'm sorry, they're just not I the same. I agree with you. you know? Yeah. It's just yeah. not the same. So, so it's good to hear. I'm not surprised to hear you say it was a memorable experience because <laughs> it, that's what a lot of people talk about when they reminisce and, and, yeah. and remember the, you know, the opportunities they had to consume Apalachicola oysters. They were just an, incredible and, and, and taken for granted, by the way, I think, by the rest yeah. of us, those of us that. I, that uh, really didn't think that it could ever happen. That bay produced 110 million oysters. Uh, I'm sorry, bushels, bushels of oysters per year. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. So you know that's an incredible resource to have basically slip through your fingers. Wow. And wow. It's, it's good amazing. to hear that yeah. they're they're rebuilding it because that was again it was some of the finest I've ever had, and there's no comparison. It's just uh, it's one of those things where once you have it, uh, it sets the the bar, if you will. Uh, for Absolutely. something else, and then it's, you know nothing else has been able. I've had oysters many times here in South Florida, and they're good. I don't want to mislead anybody, but it's just not the same. They're just not the same. Right. So it's good right. to hear that that they're rebuilding that, and that uh, 
that's coming back. Um, with regard to the expansion here in, in on, the, on the West Coast, are any possibility that once you do that, you're going to be looking at the other side of the state? Well, so yes, yes to all the above, but really it depends on the availability of product. I don't want to overstep and, and make promises that we're, we're just simply not going to be able to keep mm-hmm. uh, because of, you know, missetting people's expectations. So our next step, uh, and by the way, I can't really talk about any of this without uh, mentioning that it's really, this is all because of COVID. Um, when the governor turned the restaurants off last March, you may recall I'm talk- what I'm talking about yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we had we had to switch over to retail. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that point, Oyster Boss had been nothing but wholesale. We didn't have uh, at that time. We did not have a name on you know uh, outside the building. We didn't have our we didn't even have numbers on the mailbox. <laughs> Nobody needed to know who we were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was all it was all B to B, right? So right. anyway, in that intervening time, we've we've uh, really restructured ourselves, and we're now much more focused on retail than we were before. So. Um, what I'm looking at doing is establishing a retail presence uh, and perhaps maybe eventually a wholesale presence in the metro area down there. And uh, I've spent some time reconnoitering. Uh, Neil and Danielle have been so helpful. Um, and anyway, it's a, it's a great liaison, and, and I'm these plans are very firm. We're definitely coming to Tampa. We're going to definitely set up some programs to uh, avail the region of our oysters and and hopefully we'll we'll be down there you know permanently and and make a difference oh, in the industry exciting down there so great yeah and if you don't mind can i say something i just want to say one other thing about neil and danielle the, the ghost trap rodeo effort that they put on up here in Apalachicola um had uh, very surprisingly had a very, very big aquaculture oyster aquaculture presence um and the presence was the folks who participated in that in that event, found a lot of wayward, derelict, <clears throat> derelict apple, uh, uh, aquaculture gear uh, out there, along with the crab traps and everything else they were finding. The funniest thing they found, I thought, was a, a we- the weed eater, the weed whacker. <laughs> so I, I told uh, I told Neil we were going to start calling it the weed whacker rodeo. What the but heck? Um, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so the 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 liaison, the collaboration that I think has been uh, put together and and due in no small part to what what you did in terms of the introduction uh, is that we are hopefully now going to put together a program that will include the cleanup of aquaculture areas as well, which I think is very oh, cool. Important. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. So for so, people who totally. are not familiar with the ghost trap rodeo, what they do is uh, they typically pick a certain time of the year when um, the trappers are told to get your traps out and they're not allowed to trap during that particular time and during that time they hold a, a a tournament if you will and and they go out and they 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 find derelict traps because as as neil pointed out which is really common sense but really well, i never thought about it the trap is down there you're not using it that doesn't mean it's still not working so it's actually killing off Absolutely. sea life and nobody yeah. else is nobody's everybody loses on that deal and when I found right. out what they right. did and what they did with it, once they got it out of the water, I thought, you know, this is phenomenal. This is really something to support. I'm a big supporter of recycling. I have a plastics background. I ran a plastics business for 11 years. And plastics is a wonderful product. It can be recycled over and over again. But it is hell on the environment. It's not good for the environment at all. When you go bury this stuff, it doesn't break down easily at all. So it's, it's, right. it's really good on one end, but it's not so good on the other. So I, I found all kinds of things that we could do with the plastic that we had from uh, making uh, bricks. that People were using them to make uh, building bricks to um, hangers. We were selling them to people to make clothes hangers, out, plastic clothes hangers out of the waste that we had. Um, so recycling to me was a big deal. So when he said, you know, yeah, we're taking them out of the, out of, you know, out of, out of the water. I said, the next question was, what are you doing with them? <laughs> Once you get them, what are you doing? Cause that's really the, the bottom line for me. And, and when he told me what he did, I said, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is really, everybody wins. Everybody wins. And Absolutely. that's the kind of thing yeah. that I like to support. And I'm glad that at least in some areas you're seeing some, some progress. This, uh, this thing with the virus has really put a, a, a hurting on a lot of small businesses, and, and it's sad because a lot of them are not coming back, and a lot of them were restaurants. Right. You know, and that right. when, when you yeah. hear about a, a, a business going out, particularly a restaurant, 
you think, oh, well, you know, Joe Smith's restaurant's no longer there. It's not just a restaurant. It's all the people that supported that restaurant as well. It's, you know, you, mm-hmm. you see the restaurant shut down, but behind the scenes, how many people supported that restaurant? You had the waiters, the waitresses, the, uh, the products that came to the restaurant. All of that is no longer, it's, it's, a, it's a domino effect in an exponential mm-hmm. way. So it's good to hear that you're seeing some, some, uh, some increase, and we're seeing some increase. I think, Carolyn, are you, I mean, excuse me, yeah, Carolyn, are you seeing some, some increase in what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. Um, people are moving around by boat a little bit more. Um, they're more confident. They're doing some trips to the Bahamas now, which is a lot of folks taking my trackers there. So, yeah, I definitely see an upturn. Yeah, that's good. It's a good feeling to know that things are beginning, at least on the surface, beginning to mm-hmm. somewhat return uh, with regard to business, because so many of us have been devastated by this. And I call it insanity. I just think it's insanity. I don't, I am, I'm not one of them that goes along with the program at all. I, they think of me as somebody who is selfish and they find all kinds of words to describe me, but I just don't go along with the program. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't go along with it. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't, I, I, I can't agree with what they have done. They've done all kinds of things right. to try to justify what they've done, but I will never agree with what they have done. It's just my thing. It's just uh, right, right. Something is uh, <clears throat> well. We I think we're fortunate that we live in a state where the governor uh, has a stripe, uh, like you just described, running right up his backbone as well. Yeah. And uh, for that reason, we didn't suffer like a lot of the other um, regions of the country yeah. have suffered. But yeah. but the suffering's been there. It's palpable. It's visceral and it's it's we've all experienced it it's just it's just not been as bad in our state fortunately exactly it's worse in some places than it is here and uh, we are fortunate that we have this you know and again i'm not supporting him 100 percent. i'm I'm just saying we're fortunate that we have a man who's willing to do what he's willing to do now you we could be in new york where they're they're trying to introduce legislation in new york where you're not going to be able to move about unless you have some kind of certification that you've been vaccinated or that you don't have uh, this COVID thing that's going around. That's uh, that's not America. I mean, it's, it's a whole other yeah, subject, yeah. nothing to do with fishing, but it's a whole yeah. other subject. And uh, that's really in the direction that we were headed for quite some time. Hopefully we're going in another direction now. We're getting away from all of that insanity. And you said something earlier to me, uh, or, or you mentioned something earlier that caught my ear, and that was the, the, Gulf, uh, the Gulf oil spill. Did that mm-hmm. that came all the way over here? I wasn't aware of that. That, that affected. Uh, oh no, <clears throat> no, no, no! It's it's a it's much deeper and much worse than <laughs> than you might be suspecting. We we didn't get the oil. We did not get the oil in Apalachicola Bay. Mm-hmm. Franklin County did not get the oil. Didn't it? Did not come this far west. But regardless of that, the FWC, the regulators, if you will, uh, told uh, regional oystermen to strip the oysters off of the beds in Apalachicola Bay. The assumption being that the oil would come here, would come this far east, and it never oh, did. So, so the brood stock, yeah, the brood stock was removed from the bay, and it's worse than that because even though we didn't get the oil, they still put the dispersant. Oh the my aftermath gosh, the of the spill it. was, yeah. yeah, yeah, a complete screw up on that, my friend. So we got the we got did not get the oil, but we did get the dispersant. It turns out the dispersant, uh, uh, most people believe, uh, and I think science holds to this as well was highly toxic uh, extremely to toxic in the, in the bay extremely toxic yeah stuff. yeah wow and so the old timers the old timers that have been in the area much much longer than i have tell me there's nothing there's nothing that's alive in the oh, mud sad. of the bay oh, yeah sad. the benthic animals that normally make their living down there there's none, none of that stuff down there anymore so the very the very foundation of the bay has been ruined uh, right. at least temporarily and and maybe mother nature can put some of that stuff back together so it was a but, one- yeah so it's a very complicated um you know path tortured torturous path that's gotten us all the uh, way down here to the perdition that we currently live in it was a one and it was just, a one two punch they stripped it and then they sprayed the correction on top of it wow Pe- people ask me all the time Rascala, hey what's wrong with the bay how come how come all this collapsed and and what i say is look there's not one thing that caused this mm-hmm. But there's a thousand things that caused it, and um, yeah, it's like death by paper cut. You know, yeah. a thousand different paper cuts. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, but but the reality of it is, is that you know the bay is currently closed, and those who like you were talking about the restaurants, those who 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 formerly made their living, 
uh, in the seafood industry in Franklin County are severely impacted. Yeah. And all of the, yeah, the local economy is just flipped on its back. So it's terrible. Well, well, hopefully now, you know, we're seeing, like I said, it's an, it's an eye blinks worth, but it is a, a, at least it's a movement forward. It's a movement that it seems to be an increasing. So, and I'm going to pray that we continue in that, in that uh, direction that we continue to see an increase and, uh, we become more aware. I think because of people like like Captain Neal and uh, people like you who are educating. I, I've learned this more. I didn't realize that uh, the bay was in such dire. I, I had heard that it wasn't in good shape, but I didn't realize it was as serious right. as, as you explained this morning. So with people like you yeah. getting the word out and people like Captain Neal doing what he's doing, we at least will fight. We can combat back what has happened and do the best that we can to get it to come back. Uh I, you know, maybe four or five years, we might be talking a completely different story in four or five years from now. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm confident we will. I really am. There is evidence that that if they leave the bay alone, uh, Mother Nature will start to cobble back together all of the all of the pieces, and 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 hopefully the FWC with their effort will you know ex- expedite that. Mm-hmm. So um, when when the bay does come back, it'll be very different. It'll be a very different scenario for local aquaculture companies like my own. But we're we're already handling wild products very successfully <clears throat> from y- the Yankee Town area, so I'm actually looking forward to the bay coming back into production, and I, I think that's going to be beneficial, at least for Oyster Boss, mm, uh, because our pipelines will hopefully be, you know, set up to, to basically handle uh, other local product. I'm beating the fresh and local drum. Okay, <laughs> 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 there's a lot of oysters coming in from, uh, you know, Lord only knows where yeah. uh, to the state of Florida, thousands of miles away. Yep. Huge carbon footprints there. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, I'm 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 a big advocate of trying to know know your sources, uh, and I you know I run some groups that are farm to table and and fresh and local and that sort of thing on Facebook. But cool. anyway, long and short of it is, I think it's beneficial to for everybody to take be taking a look at this sort of thing. Excellent. Well. Time slot is up for right now, Jeff. I greatly appreciate you taking time and educating me this Thank morning. Thank you so I've much. Learned. I've learned from you, and I greatly appreciate that. Oyster Boss, I believe, yeah. is the name of the company, right? Oyster Boss? Oyster, Oyster Boss. Find us anywhere. The The website is the .com, oysterboss.com. And then, of course, we're all over Facebook, too, just like you were great. you were mentioning earlier on, on your bump there. So, yeah, great talking to you, Rascala. God Carolyn. bless you, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your info. It's always good to see how these things, you know, filter the water and uh, even the smallest little organism benefits the whole the whole planet. So That's right. That's right. God bless well, you. Wish you an awesome you day, my friend. Yeah. All right. Take care. Talk soon. So Bye long. Now. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Moments. A cruise! Right! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com. For all your toner needs, all toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. I'm Caleb. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show on WCETFM.com. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. Oh, I grab my fishing pole.
Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show every Sunday morning. 8 to 10 a.m. Several different ways you can find us. Uh, if you have the TuneIn app, you can find us on TuneIn if you go to Marina Rock Radio. Thank you, Marina Rock Radio, for allowing us to share your airwaves every Sunday morning. Uh, so that's one way you can find us. Another way you can find us on the web, www.wcetfm.com. Go there and uh, you'll find a player on Facebook. Go to uh, Fishing in Florida Show on Facebook. Click on Contact Us. Another way you can listen to us. If you have uh, an Android, you can download our app absolutely free. There is no spyware, no adware, no push notifications, just an easy way to listen to us. You can find it in any of the major stores, WCTFM uh, for Androids. Let me welcome back my co-host, that is Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Thanks for having me, Escala. And I think we have our next uh, guest on, who is Stacy. And uh, let you, uh, Carolyn, let you introduce Stacy. Absolutely. So Stacy is a friend of our our friend Wanda Stewart. She is actually one of the first is the first lady angler who was in one of the Redfish series and on the Discovery uh, Channel. So uh, hopefully we're going to be fishing soon. Uh, we uh, all help each other as women anglers, and she's got a fancy new boat she just got wrapped with a lot of logos. And uh, welcome to the show, Stacey, and uh, tell us more. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me on the show. How's everybody doing today? Good morning, it's Stacey. Beautiful. Good morning. So, yeah, let's talk about the show. So, the Elite Fishing League is uh, a reality TV show based on the trials and tribulations of Redfish Professional Tournament Fishing. And so I was casted for season one, and I just came off season one of that show uh, that was recently on Discovery. And currently, right now, it's uh, on AT&T Net, uh, Sportsnet, and then it's going to follow up on some other channels as well after that. So I fished against 14 men in a one-man style tournament where it was just a referee on the boat and a camera crew uh, and, you know, the angler. And it was mystery locations, unknown destinations. So you have no idea where you're staying, where you're going. They call you a short period of time before your fishing uh, date, and they put you in a remote location. The next morning, you wake up, and you literally get a police escort to where you're going to fish, and they drop you in the water, and you have to make a decision within 30 minutes of where you're going to fish, and then you have to fish it out uh, in two periods that day to see who can land the most fish and put them in the boat. Holy smokes. <laughs> right, and Stacy, t- tell us wow. how you met um, our friend Wanda. So I met Wanda fishing in Louisiana. Um, just a great lady. She's an ambassador for, you know, fishing for the whole state of Louisiana, but she's really big in promoting women in fishing and just a, a great asset to the sport of fishing and to red, you know, redfish and all of Louisiana, all fishing in Louisiana. And um, she, she's just wonderful late for, you know, for helping lady anglers. She's an awesome lady. We, uh, you know, on this show, I promote as much as possible lady anglers because I believe that in my life's experience, it was because my mom loved fishing so much that our family did so much fishing. And it was, again, my life's experience that the fishing was, in a way, the glue that helped, you know, held our family together. The families are under such a dire attack uh, and have been for so long. This was one of the things that we all did as a family. And uh, because we did it as a family, I believe it really was a, a, a vital component of keeping the family together. So we always support, in whatever way we can, we support uh, the lady anglers. And, and Wanda's one of the, one of the top uh, who is, like, like you said, an ambassador. Uh, through Wanda, I've met a lot of other um, lady anglers, and uh, it's an honor. It's an honor and privilege to know you guys, to know that you're out there doing what you're doing. So I'm curious now, did you show these guys up? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I certainly didn't win, but uh, I wasn't in last place either. So, you know, it's tournament fishing. Um, and, you know, on the day that you're fishing, things always don't go necessarily as planned. You mm-hmm. have great days and then some days don't go as well. But oh, yeah. I did put fish in the boat. And, you know, that's really all that matters is that you go out and you do your best. You give it 100%. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. W- many times we, I have said, and this morning, uh, one of my other guests said as well, uh, Robert said, 
you know, uh, you never know what you're going to get. You may come up with zero or you may come up as a hero. You never know. That's one of the, one of the exciting things about going fishing. There are no promises. Uh, the, only, the only promise you can have is uh, if you're willing to go out there and do it. Uh, other than that, there, nobody says you have to catch anything and nobody says you're going to come back empty handed. It's, it's either or, you know. So it's exciting and I'm glad that there are people that are, are uh, supporting the lady anglers it's good to know that there are people like you you know you're a spotlight when people see you on tv and they see what you're doing uh there may be other ladies who who see that and inspired that you're able to do these things especially with what you've described where they just (laughs) drop you off somewhere all right go get them (laughs) wow that's uh that says they have either you have a lot of confidence in yourself or uh you need to be committed (laughs) it's one of the two right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, let let me make myself very clear. Uh, you are the one back in the boat down. Nobody helps you. You are the one taking yeah. the boat off the trailer, and you are the one driving the boat, catching the fish, landing the fish. I mean, you have to do it all. No one can help you. And yeah. so at the end of the day, when it comes down to just you making a decision on where you're fishing um, and doing it all, it it's a completely different deal. And even for, you know, an angler that fishes all the time, I do team events, you know, with my partner and my husband. Just, you know, no matter how much you prepare for it, when you get out there and it's just you, it's it's uh, it's a pretty stressful situation, I have to be honest with you. But I have a lot of determination. My parents raised me very independent and very strong-minded, and I thought, you know what, I, this is a personal goal for myself. I want to go out and show myself that I can do this. And trust me, you know, two, three years ago, I was not driving the boat by myself. I wasn't putting it in the water by myself. But, you know, I just practice and I just thought, you know, I've got to do this. And my dad always told me, you need to know how to drive that boat because you never know what's going to happen to mm-hmm. your fishing partner. And you need, you need to know how to get that boat where it needs to, where it needs to be. So I just put it in my head. I'm going to do this and let's see, you know, how the cards fall. I and mean, you just never know. Anything can happen. Well, you, and you know, Riscala, um, this is a uh, Stacy's passion, but Stacy, tell, tell us what you do full time during the day. So this is a, her side gig. So what else do you do that, you know, I own a real estate appraisal company, Sand Dollar Appraisers and Consultants, uh, right in, you know, Destin, Fort Beach, Florida. And so that I've done that 16 years. So I, you know, I was raised fishing with my parents, bass and brim fishing. And just on a fluke, I fished a tournament out of Panama City Beach, Florida, a mm. uh, pole redfish tournament and won the first tournament I ever fished. So after that, you know, I got the tournament bug and I have never looked back ever since that. So I've been doing this since 2017 and I've been having a great time. And I have to tell you, you know, even though women are rare uh, in this tournament um, industry, the gentlemen that I fish with are so awesome across the board. All of them have been so helpful. Um, you know, they just they just really, really help you. They take care of you. They treat you like family, make sure that you do come in on the water. And uh, everybody's been just very welcoming, uh, you know, amongst all the tournament leagues, the elite redfish series, the IFA sponsored by Cabela's in the past and the power pole tournaments. It's just a great camaraderie and family when we get together. And I really enjoy doing it. And I think a lot of women don't realize that we are welcome and they are willing to help us and they do want to see us succeed. Mm. Well, you you mentioned something that I was going to uh, I was going to say, and and that was you are an example of, or maybe an inspiration, maybe a better word, for those ladies who want to see someone who is independent. You use the word independent, and that's what came to me when you were describing how you were everything. You were doing everything. You were the one who drove the boat down. You were the one who took it off the trailer. You were the one who was captaining the boat. You're the one who's catching the fish. You're the one who's putting the fish in the boat. An independent example for uh, a lady, and I think that might be an inspiration for others. That that you know they're they're not there, but they see that you're able to do it. Why, if she's able to do it, I'm then you know I can do it. it it's an example for someone else, a positive example, which is what we need today more than ever before. A positive example for for women that uh, that want to feel that that bit you know some men are, are they feel kind of uh, intimidated by a woman like you because you are independent and there is a this there is this uh, pre- prejudice if you will uh with women you know you're supposed to be barefoot at home pregnant kind of thing and there's still a lot of men that think like that and they run across someone like you and go whoa <laughs> but there are ladies who see you and and it's inspiration to them uh, to to be that, I think it's important 
that that ladies are independent. I think God wants us not to be so independent that we don't rely on anybody else in all of our lives, but to be independent to the point where we can rely on ourselves. We can look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I did it. I went out there. I didn't want to do it. It was hard. It was stressful, whatever it might be, but I did it. At the, at the end of the day, you can look yourself in the mirror and be proud. I did it. And that for other people is an answer. And for me to hear what you're doing and I had a 24-foot well craft, and there were times when I, I was so bent on going fishing. I went by myself. I couldn't find anybody. I went by myself. What a nightmare. But I tell you what, I did it. So I know where you're coming from when you said that, you know, a while back you weren't able to do these things, but you practiced, you put forth a commitment, and now you're doing it. I think it's awesome. It's an awesome example for others. Thank you for doing thing, for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, you just have to think, everyone started where I am. Everyone had to take the boat off the trailer their first time and put mm-hmm. it back on their first time. There's going to be factors that, that change the situation, the wind, the tides. You know, there's going to be people at the boat ramp all over the place. And you just have to say, you know what, I'm going to just take my time here and I'm going to get this done. And I went to the boat ramp, you know, at the times when I knew nobody was going to be there. So I could practice, you know, doing that. Not, you know, I'm not perfect every time, but. You can do it. You know, all you got to do is go out there and give it a try and you can do it. And I just hope that ladies, you know, know that there is a place for us in fishing. There is a place for us on the trail. And there are people that will help you get the tools that you need. I have great sponsors that believe in me, um, you know, that provide me with my fishing stuff. And so, you know, if I can do it, you can too. Amen. I'm right there with you, my dear, and I'm grateful that we have people like you who are willing to do that, willing to step up above the crowd, be in the spotlight, and be a a positive influence, because we need more positive influences. There's so much negativity out there today with all this insanity that's going on. It's the more positive influences that we can get. It's easier, you know, one of the reasons I do what I do in the show is to help promote fishing for a family. So if, because, again, in my experience, it was fishing that, that was so a vital component of our family. And part of that is the, the uh, you know, this is kind of redundant, but it's, it's, it's the ladies' component of that. If, if we have a husband that goes fishing all the time, all by himself, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the, the wife doesn't want to go, the kids don't want to go. But once the, the mom gets involved, the children are much more apt to get involved. And once the family is doing it as a family unit, I I can't help but think that it helps create a stronger bond within the family. And when we see somebody like Stacy who's out there able to, to show others, to give them the inspiration uh, that they need, um, it's it's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> really, I mean that. Thank you. I'm grateful for people like that. Thank you. Carolyn? Oh, I'm just glad Stacy called in, and I think uh, Stacy, you know Terry Hopmaster too, right? Either have spoken that's, with her or fished with her. That's correct. Yes, we are friends on social media, and we've talked about getting together. We are supposed to do a redfish trip here soon. Just that uh, the tournament schedule is going to be busy this year. We've got some new uh, leagues, professional national redfish league, that uh, is going to be doing 16 stops this year, and then you know we've got the other. Uh, series as well so we we're supposed to get together and do a day of red fishing over in louisiana and mm. i'm super excited to put her on the boat and do some sight fishing with her i think you know red fishing is awesome everywhere but when you go to louisiana it's a it's something special and if you've never uh, done red fishing in louisiana well you know once you fish there uh you're, it's just gonna blow your mind so i'm i'm very excited about putting her in the boat uh, hopefully in venice or home of louisiana and showing her how we sight fish reds because uh, if you ever fish for reds, most people know that you're just blind casting. But when you're in Louisiana, you can actually pitch for them right in front of the boat and watch them eat and oh. uh, set the hook. It's, a, it's an experience <laughs> that you'll never forget. Oh, I'd like to see that. That's pretty cool. Hope you get some video of that. So if anybody wants to find out more about you, Stacy, I, I take it that you're probably on mo- most of the major social platforms. You're on Facebook and, and I, Riffin. I am. I do have Stacy. You know, fishing, um, and that's Facebook, Instagram on, you know, the social platforms. And so they can find me there. Or if you just Google my name, of course, I'm going to come up. There's, you know, quite a bit of stuff that's recently come up and, um, you know, in the internet. And I'm just blessed. I want to say that I'm just blessed and very appreciative and thankful to all my sponsors. One of my top sponsors this year, Lithium Pros, as well as Fish Bites, um, you know, for believing in me and uh, Waterloo Rods and, you know, Simmons Custom Boats, Power Pole Mercury, all of those guys for believing in me and helping me do what I do on the water. 
and I appreciate you guys for having me on the show as well. Well, it was an honor to have you on, and, and I truly appreciate people like you, my friend, who are an inspiration to others to help bring about a better society for everybody. God bless you. Wish you an awesome day. Let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you. Thank Absolutely. You so tight, line, tight line, Stacy. My best to your family. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless. All right. Let me get on to, I see we've got another call from 865. I don't know who this is. Area code 865. You are on the Fishing in Florida show. Good morning. Good morning. And your first name? Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, and How are you? Are you calling with a question or a comment? Well, I'm just calling to congratulate Stacy on how well she's been doing the last couple of years. Oh, okay. Wow, how nice is that? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's still on the line, Stacy. Are you still there? I am still here. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Stacy. This is Joe. I just called to congratulate you on how well you've been doing over the last couple of years following your career around. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate that. Wow. Well, that's a that's first. Awesome. So, you know what? <laughs> it's pretty It's pretty neat to know that uh, the ladies are finally getting out there and uh, and actually have a fan base. So, again, Stacy, congratulations. Yep. Wow. Thank you so much. All right, Joe. Thank thanks you for, for calling in, Joe. Thanks for calling in, Joe. Yep, we greatly have appreciate a good one. it. Wish you an awesome day, my friend. All right, we are, I think we're, we're kind of running behind schedule, so we're not going to go to a break, but we are going to go to the one and only Florida Salty Cowgirl, who is another lady angler who I love so dearly. Good morning, my dear Angelia. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? We're doing great. Good morning, Angelia. Hey, Carolyn, how are you? Good, good. I'm sorry you didn't make it up this weekend. I might be heading to Mexico tomorrow, all depending on COVID, oh, but uh, we'll, we'll get you up here uh, real soon. That's exciting. Well, I'm not in the Keys right now because I'm a third-generation Tampa girl, and I am in Tampa for the world's biggest Super Bowl party today. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even really care that much about football, but it would be really fun if Tampa would win. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's been an interesting week on the water. We had a little bit of wind the beginning of the week that kind of knocked us all off the water. Uh, but midweek, uh, I made it out with some guys, and and uh, we were playing around, and we couldn't not catch Almaco jacks or amber jacks. Uh, oh, wow. We were just catching them at the speed of the light. So they must have moved in really, really heavy, which is fine for the people that like to eat them because they are, you know, decent eating fish if you want to cook them appropriately from what I hear. I personally don't eat them. <laughs> I hear they're oily. What, they're very oily fish. Um, they're they're supposedly very oily, and uh, you know, personally, I like to go offshore to the humps, and I like to vertical jig for the big ones, mm -hmm. and they're really fun to catch. There's a reason they call them reef donkeys, uh, because they say you go and wrestle reef donkeys. <laughs> you definitely are wrestling this fish. <laughs> There's plenty of videos of me wrestling these things up to the surface online, and. Uh, it, it is just exciting as can be. It's the most amazing fight you're ever going to get. Uh, there's a lot of small ones, but those big ones are the really fun ones. But the big ones, you guys, are filled with worms in their meat. Uh, oh, no. And they also have, will have a lot of sea lice on the outside of them. So it's always kind of turns me off. The oily, the, the worms in the meat. Uh, hmm. I've heard a lot of people say once you cook them that those worms, you'll never even know they were there. But I know they were there when I cleaned them. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, they're basically um, tapeworms from sharks that have made its way their way through the entire food system, the whole ch food chain. Wow. Um, shark species gets eaten by bait fish that carry these, you know, microscopic worms, and the bait fish are eaten by bigger fish, and the worms just go through the entire fish cycle, is from what I hear. Hmm. Um, but it's not a very attractive thing for me. But as far as catching them, you will not find a more fun fish to catch. They fight like crazy. They fight like a jack. Uh, really fun, really streamlined. But we did a little bit of trolling and caught a few and uh, decent sized ones. And then we were playing around the reef and we're still catching them. So they've got to be thick out there. Um, wow. On top of that, I've heard about some cobia coming in, which is really nice. That's always a good thing. Uh, the sailfish are still biting. And, Carolyn, you're going to laugh. I'm already seeing people cherry-picking some small mahi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mahi are, yeah, the mahi are, I, I, 
I've seen it, Carolyn, just a few here and there, but they're they're starting to show up and the water's cold and I don't know why, but it's been a really strange year for weather and fishing. Um, so, hey, if they want to come in early, that's fine. They'll be nice and thick by, by tournament time, you know, so I'm game. Because <laughs> March will start getting some mahi tournaments that I really would love to participate in this year and to pray that my mahi is like much, much better, you know, so... Uh, and that's where you're going to come in, Carolyn. We're going to come down here. We're going to find those mahi this year. But, yeah, uh, you, but you, yeah, you you pick them, we'll fish them. <laughs> you got it. But uh, being it's in February now and we're we're staying a little bit warmer down in the Keys, uh, you are seeing the mixture of fish come in again. You know, you're seeing a little bit of the, more of the spring fish come in. You're seeing the winter fish still there. Uh, like I've been saying, winter fishing is just a great time to fish in the Keys. It's been really exciting. And, hey, I haven't caught some amberjack in a while. So to go out there and play around and catch some good ones, that's kind of nice. You know, that's fun always. Uh, and the smaller ones, from what I hear, are a little bit better to eat, a little oilier. But if you smoke them like you would a kingfish, uh, make fish spread out of them, supposedly they're pretty darn good. But um, I just catch them for sport. <laughs> so it'll be really fun. I've got a three-day trip out to the Dry Tortugas and the Marquesas in the next couple of weeks. I'll nail down that date on Monday. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wow. Uh, that's really exciting. Yeah, we're going to go out for three or four days uh, all the way out to Marquesas Key, Dry Tortugas, and we're going to target uh, really just – we'll probably troll out there and troll back, but once we get out there, we're going to target – limiting out on yellowtail and snapper and, and just have a good time and see what's out there. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, please weather cooperate with me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far so, uh, off, how far offshore are the dry tortugas? I, you know, I, I, I don't even know in miles, uh, Riscala, that's a horrible thing to say. Uh, I've been out to them a couple times. How long does it you take you to get out there? I was going to say, depending on the boat, of course, um, it's taken me as few as two hours to get out there and as many as five or six, depending on what wow. boat we're on. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I would have to I would have to look it up to tell you exactly how many miles out it is. And that sounds terrible for a Keys captain, but <laughs> I'm not really a Key West kind of girl, you know, yeah. <laughs> which is of course where you're going to head out of. So when, when but, um, I hear a lot about the dry tortugas. I've never seen them and I've never been out there. What Describe the dry tortuga. Why do they call it? Is it an island? A bunch of islands? Um, it, yes. Uh, there's actually a big park out there. Uh, it's on wow. an island. Uh, and, and there's a big park that uh, I do believe that you can camp on, and they do tours, and it's really interesting. Uh, if anybody wants to Google Earth it, the water around it is absolutely amazing. Hmm. Uh, it's all coral. It's all crystal clear. It's, it's mm. the same kind of stuff in the upper keys, but in a much larger uh, area spread out instead of just in a long skinny line all the way down the keys. It's just a big, beautiful area of just uh, the most perfect bottom to fish. Uh, the fish are just thick there. It's always been such good fishing out there. But, yeah, it's a, it's an actual tourist spot. They have shuttles that go out there to the park, and they give people tours, and there's an entire history to it that I'm also not very uh, well-versed with. So <laughs> that's a Googleable item there. A Googleable. But, um, <laughs> I like that, a Googleable item. Yeah, I'm right. You nice like word. my new word, Googleable? Yeah, I like that. Googleable. <laughs> because I've actually never stepped foot on the uh, on the island itself. I've, mm -hmm. I've always been on the boat fishing. So, But I haven't been out there in a few years, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, it should be a really, really good time. And going with a couple guys that I haven't fished with before that are really familiar with the area. So I'm hoping to learn some new things from them. I'm always wanting to pick up new tricks and new spots and new areas. And I love to fish with new people. So it should be a really good time. Uh, like and if awesome. the fishing's been like it's been the last couple of months, then it should be a really good time. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be an awesome experience. You know, I think Carolyn mentioned she's going down to Mexico. She's going to go fish with the people down in Mexico. She comes That's back. Awesome. To yeah. Jealous. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the only challenge I have, and I've been doing a little reading, and I have to find out is, um, you know, I've, I've been, been public about the fact that I had COVID at uh, Christmas time, and you have to come back with a clean COVID test. So you have to test on the way back. Mm. So that's that's my only uh, my only thing that's kind of making me uh, think about well, it. But, yeah, but you've, uh, I'm you've, trying to get my ass down there. You you've already had it, so you're more than likely. I mean, the odds are in your favor. You're going to test negative because you've already had. I it. would think 
Carolyn, and I'll give you a little tip, and I know this is off topic for our fishing show, but um, I, too, was uh, unfortunate enough to catch COVID uh, back in November, and I didn't have such a bad time with it, but it took me a while to test negative. And then what I did over Christmas time is I went to the local blood bank, the Florida blood bank. And if you donate blood, they automatically test you for the antibody. So I donated blood and found out that I absolutely have the antibodies. And so at least maybe I shouldn't worry about it for a little while. But if you have the antibodies, Carolyn, then you'll know that you're going to test negative coming back into the country. And I would, hey, if you're not going to take that trip, I'll take that trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, it's free. That's the thing. Uh, and, you know, and it's, uh, the flight's tomorrow at 1. So I'm oh like, holy crap, i got to get gracious. some going. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get some good good pictures, and we'll get you down there next time. And I'll let you all know if I end up uh, being brave enough to jump on that flight. <laughs> yeah, do it, Carol. Do it. Oh, my. That's, that's a dream come true right there now. So just figure out how you're gonna uh, how you're gonna get your tour. I guess you take a test when you're down there. You know, while you're down there, they'll give you a test on your way back. Right. Oh, fishing for? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Angela. What What will you guys be fishing for? Uh, I think sailfish. They got 40 yesterday. Wow. I've right, heard and this thick in the Bahamas, but it's crazy this year. As thick as they are in the Keys, they're always bigger and thicker in the Bahamas. So I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this is uh, this is real captivating. The boat that we fish out of Palm Beach, they moved it all the way to Mexico, and they're the ones that provide our ladies, uh, pink pink ladies, uh, fishing gear. So, uh, you know, if they want us down for a couple photos, we'll definitely do it. But, uh, yeah, absolutely, and I've got to get you out your shirt, too. I want to see awesome. some of those pictures. I want you to post some of those pictures on the Fishing in Florida show on Facebook. Heck, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and I'll let you all know if I go. And, Angelia, we'll get you back up here when uh, when uh, I get back and uh, do a little fishing on yeah. our boat. Yeah. Yeah, just keep it. Carolyn's, Carolyn's lucky. She If she can't get the boat out, she should go out in the backyard. You know, it's like that guy was describing earlier. If he can't. Uh, oh, he, Skipper. He, yeah. He's let got me, the whole let backyard. Let me tell you what, I saw pictures. Lexi, their three-legged dog, will go out in the bay herself and fish. She, you'll see photos of her, a video of her putting her head under the water, coming up to fish. <laughs> and she's even, she's even come up with some lobsters. Oh my god! You gosh. get lobsters right out That's in front awesome. of the house. Oh, awesome! Yeah. <laughs> well, here I'll tell you guys a cute story about me. Uh, there in Key Largo, where I live on Bayside, I live with a couple of commercial pilots on a big piece of property. And a beautiful waterfront property, but they'll come to me and they'll say, you haven't brought us any fish in a while. We want fish. So I simply go back to the dock. I drop a chum bag and I catch my limit of mangrove snapper and I fillet them and I go, okay, now you guys got fish. (laughs) (laughs) How awesome is that? Oh my gosh. I miss those days. When I was a kid growing up in, in, growing up in Coral Gables, (laughs) we have saltwater canals and, and they were much, much cleaner than they are today. It's sad what they are today, but. I could go fishing in the in the canals and catch whatever was in the bay was in the canals. Whether it was a barracuda or it was a snapper, grouper, whatever it might be, was in the canals as well. And any given day, I in the canal was like a block away from my house. Uh, and so I could just get my fishing rod. And the thing was, we'd take a fishing rod and a little bit of tackle and a bucket. And that's it. We wouldn't take any bait. When we got down to the canal, we'd, we'd catch our own bait and use the bait and uh, fish that way. Yeah, that's, it's so awesome to be able to just to walk out... You know, like like Carolyn, like Angelia. Jeez, man, you make me you make me want to come down there. <laughs> uh, right, both well, of us. Wow. Well, all I, right, we are uh, we are rapidly running out of time. Uh, before we go, Angelia, what do you want to share before we go here as we run out of time? Well, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And if you haven't gotten out there fishing lately, please go out there and wet a line. It's so much fun. It's soul cleansing, and there's it's just there's Amen. nothing wrong with it. It's I That's agree a with wonderful. That. When are you going to be back in uh, in the Keys? Oh, I'll be back tomorrow night. I'm just making a quick trip to uh, spend Super Bowl with my beautiful son and some family and friends, and uh, hopefully they'll win. And I'm heading back tomorrow. <laughs> right. Safe, safe travels. And uh, the Florida salty cowgirl. If you want to find her, look up the Florida salty cowgirl. If you want to fish in the Keys, this is the lady you want to talk to because she knows been down there for a while now she's she's learned the neighborhood if you will thank you angelie i greatly appreciate it i wish you an awesome day regardless of the weather because the weather over here is not too good and uh, let me give carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you yeah tight lines angelie enjoy that super bowl party and uh, we'll talk this week you got it guys happy sunday everyone 
God bless you, my dear. Carolyn, thank you for being our co-host this morning. Greatly appreciate it. I wish you an awesome day. Is it clearing up at all, or does it look like it's uh, getting more cloudy where you're at? Getting more cloudy and blowing a little more, so I think it's uh, we got rain heading in. Yeah, that's what I, I figure. It's just as the day goes on, it's probably just going to continue to to deteriorate. All right, everybody, thank you so much for taking time to listen. Greatly appreciate it. Wish you an awesome day, and we'll be back in a week. God bless. I wake up in-